you're invited today. Today is the exactly one year anniversary of the uh, WHO's calling of the uh, global pandemic. pandemic that we are still in the midst of. Uh, despite the fact that there are signs of hope, we are not out of the woods yet. Um, as the uh, um, quarantining and all of that at the downtown um, service sites, uh, you know, the mission and the Salvation Army and the, all of that uh, indicate, uh, as well as the hospitals and a couple more schools today. So um, please remain vigilant. Um, and we've been asked uh, by our Metropolitan, the most reverend uh, Anne Garamond, uh, Metropolitan of Ontario, the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario, all that to say, um, the head bishop in the province of Ontario uh, has asked us to observe a few moments of silence at 11.35, uh, which happened to coincide with this service perfectly. So um, I invite you to, to um, uh, rest in the presence of God and um, observe a few moments of silence uh, to mark the... Uh, the loss, the pain, the grief, um, and the resilience, compassion, and sacrifices of the past year. Uh, so I will begin uh, in a moment's time on page one of the prayer book, but until then, um, let us rest in silence and I'll, I'll mute everybody to enforce the silence. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth you of the evil. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and faith, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. And let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. A 
Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Together we confess. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Let us say together the Venite found on page six of your prayer book. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your forebears tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the ferment shows the handiwork of the Lord. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has God set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber, and it rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the land, <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statues of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. Lord is clear, uh, the fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous to altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? Cleanse me from my secret secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from your presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are per perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire, desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to turn to page seven of your prayer book and let us say together the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter, Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver us, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. 
thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Second lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. John, the second chapter beginning at the 13th verse. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He to told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said to Jesus, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he, was after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue on page nine of your prayer book. Let us say together the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he uh, swore to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Together let us profess the faith of our baptism, as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the Queen. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Let us pray. Father of mercy, alone we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. When we are discouraged by our weakness, strengthen us to follow Christ, our pattern and our hope, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the words of Psalm 19 that we just heard, uh, Ruth, thank you. Uh, let us... Uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So many of you will recall that I was raised uh, for a lifetime several years in the Pentecostal church. Um, <laughs> um, and um, the, the the sentence out of the gospel that is uh, sticking, uh, I already preached on this once this week, so I, I'm sort of digging a, a bit <laughs> deeper this at this time. Um, but the the uh, the phrase or the sentence out of the uh, the gospel that has stuck with me since Sunday, I guess, um, is um, that sentence that uh, Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. Um, and as a, as a recovering Pentecostal, uh, uh, things, the things of the body um, are awkward for um, lots of people uh, because they sort of imposed this um, uh, sort of binary thing where things divine are are good and things of the flesh are bad, um, and so Jesus never preached that. That was not Jesus at all. <laughs> um, the, he, he even the first couple of sentences of John's gospel, the the one that that passage uh, starts with, um, you know, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So there is nothing inherently evil about flesh. Um, um, and so I, I was uh, 
doing some reading this weekend and a hymn uh, that I'd never heard uh, sort of came up. It's, uh, it's apparently written by Brian Wren, uh, who I don't know, um, but I'm, I'm not a music guy, so I could rarely, even with pop songs, associate artists with the song that they write and sing. Um, so uh, Brian Wren means nothing to me, but the title of the hymn is Good is the Flesh. Um, uh, David's nodding his head, so it's apparently not a, a completely unheard of uh, hymn. Um, and it is one that we would never have sung um, at Pentecostal Church uh, in, in childhood. Um, and the first stanza goes like this. Good is the flesh that the word became. Good is the birthing, the milk in the breast. Good is the feeding, care, caressing and rest. Good is the body for knowing the world. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Um, and it goes on from there. Um, and that is a phrase that I never heard at church as a child, <laughs> um, uh, much less anything about milk of the breast and gladness of uh, embracing and tasting and smelling. Um, I learned only later the importance of the incarnation, the enfleshment of God, um, and that that is central Christian orthodoxy. That's not something that, that would have ever um, been phrased in that way when I was a child. I'm, I'm sure that, and I don't mean to run down the church of my childhood, they're really lovely people, but um, this they just don't see it in the same way, um, although uh, they would not deny it if pressed. Uh, we didn't do the thing of honoring flesh. Um, and, and that Jesus would stand in the temple in this week's reading and insist that his body was the temple. His flesh was the temple or would become the temple. And that, that it could be destroyed and rebuilt um, in the space of three days. People who were listening to him were assuming that he was talking about the, the great temple of Herod, um, sitting on those uh, 24 football fields worth of pavement uh, that I described on, on Sunday, uh, but he wasn't. Um, he was raising flesh to the level of temple. So during Lent, um, we sort of set aside time to um, dwell on, on scripture. And today, we're, this week, we're asked to think about a human body as a place of holiness, as homes for God. It's not an easy thing to do um, for me, I think. Maybe I still have some, you know, um, hang-ups from my, from my childhood. Um, it is easy, um, easier maybe, um, to sort of set the human body aside as inherently sinful, a shameful thing, a, a spiritually dangerous thing. Um, battleground for a sort of spiritual warfare, that sort of, um, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but it's just not true. <laughs> um, that said, I still have all of these, uh, these things. So most of the time I, I you know, uh, see my own body as something that I, I want to change the shape of, or I, I want to sort of tame into a better um, uh, space, or um, um, I, I see the flaws more uh, clearly than I see um, the, the God-ordained um, and God-occupied dignity and beauty of it. Um, But John is telling us something 
essential about where and how we might find God. We are people of the incarnation in the truest sense. Even as we look ahead to Easter, we can look back to the incarnation uh, that we celebrated at Christmas. And we're called to look and see and when we can break bread and share wine and wash feet. Um, all of those are fleshy things, bodily things. We learn to, to see our bodies, our senses, our physical lives as fully a part of the life of God. To move past the, the sort of contempt that we hold our bodies in, the squeamishness we might have about our body, the fear, and, and offer God our whole selves. Today, though, um, in this week's gospel story, there's, there's a high cost in honoring human flesh in the home of the divine. What Jesus calls out when he cleanses the temple is not Judaism uh, or its various forms of worship. It's a system of exploitation um, via the exorbitant tithes and taxes that block access to the divine that literally keep bodies of the poor outside the gates of the temple, forcing them into more and endless debt before they can approach and worship God. Um, I have a little section of Barbara Brown Taylor books on my um, uh, shelf, and she writes in uh, An Altar in the World, um, that it's not possible uh, to lean into God's love for um, her body, she writes, uh, without simultaneously recognizing that God loves all bodies everywhere. The bodies of the hungry children and indentured women, uh, along with the bodies of sleek athletes and cigar-smoking tycoons. One of the truer things about bodies, Taylor uh, writes, is that it's just about impossible to increase the reverence I show mine without also increasing the reverence I show to everybody else's. So in other words, uh, once I value my own body as God's temple, as a site of God's pleasure, delight, and grace, how can I stand by while other bodies suffer exploitation, poverty, discrimination, abuse, death? And apparently Jesus couldn't. He interrupted worship on that long ago day for the sake of justice. He, he moved from compassion to righteous anger to decisive action because he would not stand for the violation of sanctuary. He wouldn't tolerate blocked access to the temple, his father's house. He wouldn't stomach any version of unfairness cruelty towards the most vulnerable and beleaguered people in his society. Those poor lives, those, ma uh, those exploited lives, those discriminated lives of the poor who couldn't afford the temple sacrifices and the exchange rates on coins mattered that day. We don't really hear much about anger in, in church, do we? Um, it's all supposed to be warm and fuzzies, right? Um, it, it's not the case. It's been turned to that, perhaps, but, but righteous anger is not misplaced in church. There's something, though, unseemly about rage, perhaps, something unsophisticated or crude. It's not polite to get angry. It's um, positively insupportable, to, to stay angry. But Jesus, in the very temple of God, burned with, his, with zeal for his father's house. He didn't use love and forgiveness as palliatives. He allowed a holy anger to move him to action on behalf of the helpless and the voiceless. 
those who were helping themselves and, and had the loudest voices were already taken care of. He, he took up the cause of the helpless and the voiceless. There's nothing godly about responding to sy systemic evil with passive acceptance or unexamined complicity. If human bodies really are temples, holy places where heaven and earth meet, then we must work as Jesus did to preserve and protect these holy places from every form of irreverence and desecration. We must let go of the comfortable, comfortable beliefs that our highest callings as Christians is to niceness. But this can't happen if we keep our faith lives tethered at the level of intellectual abstraction. If we live a Christianity of the mind without also living it of the flesh. So after all, it is with our bodies that we experience deep pain, deep anger, deep terror, deep joy. It's my chest and my stomach that hurt when I mourn someone. My face that burns when I'm angry. I flush red at the drop of a hat, so um, uh, I'm just that Irish, I guess. Um, it's my whole body that warms when I'm happy. So ask. I ask myself, you can ask yourself during this Lenten season, has our power to act, to deepen relationship, or to love fiercely, those are all bodily things, has that atrophied by our call to be nice? Where is our faith? Where has it become so abstract or so disembodied that we no longer find it natural or easy to rejoice with those who rejoice or mourn with those who mourn. Good is the flesh that the word has become, in the words of that Ren hymn. Do we believe it? Do we believe it enough to honor bodies all created flesh as precious temples of God. Don't say it glibly. The cost involved is steep. Those who live by compassion are often canonized. Those who live by justice are often crucified. No, it's not either or, it's both and. We can be both compassionate and justice. It is our life, it's our love for Christ's body that compels us to both compassion and justice. You are a temple, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in you. Don't be nice when that is desecrated or compromised in other people. Stand just, justly, flip a table, fashion a bullwhip if you need to, um, to protect the life and dignity of every human being. And the rest of us will do it for you, hopefully. But know that it's not an easy path. Um, nice is easier sometimes. It eats away at your guts, though, um, eventually. Um, so, defend the dignity of every human being. And we will defend yours. Amen. We continue in prayer.
Um, and before I read this next prayer, um, I would ask um, your prayers for all the royal family. Um, there are bits of it that are um, in pain these days. Um, and um, I, 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 I take um, Harry and Meghan's comments at, as delivered, um, and they are in, in pain and have been in pain and are working through pain. Um, I also take Her Majesty's um, statement that it has pained her uh, to hear that. Um, so sort of in, in such a first person way. Um, and so um, I would ask your prayers for them as they work through, through all of that. She is still our sovereign. Um, and whether, whether we're, we're committed monarchists or not, it is neither here nor there. It is a simple fact that, that she is tied to us and we to her. So um, let us pray. O Lord, almighty God, who rulest the nations of the earth, we humbly beseech thee with thy favor to behold our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, that in all things she may le be led by thy guidance and protected by thy power. We pray thee also to bless uh, this week uh, Philip, who is quite ill, gravely ill, I think, um, as well as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and all the royal family. And do, thy, thy, and do with wisdom um, the acting governor general of this dominion, the lieutenant governors of the provinces, the legislators of the commonwealth, and all who are set in authority, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavors upon the best and surest foundations, that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy, thinking especially of Todd, Bev, Sharla, Paul, Elise, Nancy, Sue, and all the congregations and people committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayer of Intercession. Holy God, you have called us to live before you and with one another in all faithfulness. Unable to live as you intend, we inflict harm and hurt on others and ourselves as well. In all these ways, we know we grieve your heart also. Hear then our prayers of intercession. Restore us to communion with you and one another that we might live in the freedom you have bestowed. We pray for people who are victims of crime from petty theft to murder. We pray that those harmed with finding healing and will dwell in safety. Hold especially close to your heart, O oh God, those who have lost a loved one to violence and help us offer tenderness and care in the struggles and grief. Let us comfort and pray for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially thinking of Horatio, Baby Rye, Joni Carl, Jackie Edwards, Bill Ferris, Andy and Claudette Henry, Cheryl Brazo, Prince Philip and the Royal Family, Ben Goombridge, Iris McGuire, Alice McFabby, Baby Ian, Owen Swain, Doug Drown, Nadine Headley. 
Hold especially close to your heart, O oh God, those who have lost a loved one to, to violence and help us to offer tenderness and care in their struggle and grief. We pray also for those who have committed crimes that they may seek and find forgiveness and begin a new life of responsibility and integrity before you in the community. We pray for healing and reconciliation where trust has broken, hostility has flared, or misunderstanding has grown. Restore us not only to one another, but reconcile us to other ourselves and to you, loving God. If restoration proves beyond hope, then grant new beginnings and possibilities for all. In every relationship, we seek your grace as we honor others by caring for them, being truthful and working for their welfare. welfare. Root out in us any jealousy toward what others possess and let generosity grow in among us instead. Gracious God, we pray for those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, for those lonely and isolated from the community, for those who have burdened by guilt or grief, by depression or despair. Do not let us turn inward as a church, lest we shut out or neglect those who long for a community of welcome and companionship. Send us out in love, and with our eyes and ears and hearts, make us true neighbors to one another and true children of your own calling. We also want to remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants that have departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering Neil, Mary Wilkinson, and Don Dudfield. We pray in the name of Christ, who has come to set us free. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now the peace of God, that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us close together with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>